In this video, I'm going to show you an app that will allow you to use an iPad as a monitor or screen for your Canon DSLR camera. So one of the great things about DSLR cameras these days is that most of them, particularly a lot of the new ones, all have touch screens. So which is great because if you're gonna change the ISO or the shutter speed or any of the different settings that we're constantly needing to change in order to make our videos, you can just tap right there on the screen or you can drag or tap wherever you want the camera to focus. And if you're talking to the camera, if you're doing a video similar to the one that I'm making right now, you can flip out that screen so that you can see yourself and you can get an idea of what the image and the picture looks like which is super helpful as well. Now, while it is super helpful and handy to have one of these screens built into your camera, there are quite a few limitations, particularly if you're going to be shooting in 4K or if you just want to be very particular with the way that the image of the actual video looks after you're done creating it. Because the screen is so small, if you're shooting in something like 4K, it's going to be almost impossible for you to be able to see all of the detail that you're capturing in that 4K image. So it could be possible as you throw that footage out onto your computer that you're going to start to see things that uh, if I would have known that what I was shooting, I probably would have moved that plan or would have changed this or would have changed that or moved the lighting here, whatever it is. There comes a number of different times, regardless of the type of video that you're shooting, where it's helpful to just be able to see that image a little bit bigger than that little teeny screen. So what you could try and what I tried for years is actually buying a dedicated monitor for your camera and they do sell a number of them on Amazon and they're pretty affordable. But one of the things I ran into even with one of the 4k displays is that they're still not quite big enough and the one that I had at least I can't speak for all of them but the battery on it died super quick. That's when one day I realized I've got this iPad sitting around a 12.9 iPad Pro that I'm not even using that much. Why can't they just use that? as a monitor for my camera. And so I started doing some research. I downloaded the Canon app and a number of different other apps. And for whatever reason, I just could not find any tutorials here on YouTube that showed me how to do it successfully. And so in turn, what I did is I just started going through the app store for the iPad and just trying app after app after app until finally, finally I found an app that actually works. The app itself is called Camera Connect and Control. And again, as I mentioned, it's for the iPad, but it, they do also have it available for desktop or for Mac OS as well. So if you want to use a giant monitor, your actual computer monitor, or even a laptop as your monitor or screen for your camera, you can do that as well. Okay, but a quick disclaimer here. Now, as it goes with pretty much all camera stuff in general, this is going to vary based upon what kind of camera you have and what type of iPad you have. So just know that I can't guarantee that this will work for you. If you have something maybe comparable to what I have, maybe it's more likely to work. What I'm shooting on is a Canon EOS R5. That's my camera. And then as I mentioned for the iPad, it is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro and the two work flawlessly together. Now, once you're inside this app, what you'll see is there's a number of different ways you can connect. Technically, you can even connect via Wi-Fi, so completely wirelessly from your iPad to your camera. I personally didn't have much luck with that. I don't think that the connection is quite as stable. So what I did, what I recommend is actually connecting via USB. Now, the Canon R5 has a USB-C port and the iPad Pro has a Thunderbolt port, which is pretty much comparable to a USB-C port as far as the two working together goes. So in order for me to be able to connect from my iPad to my camera, all I needed was an extra long USB-C cable, which you can buy really inexpensively on Amazon. Now, if you've got a different camera that doesn't have a USB-C port, you're just going to want to make sure that you get some sort of USB-C to whatever USB type of port your camera has, whether that's USB mini or one of the old fashioned like or 3.0 ports, whatever it is, they sell a ton of different cables on Amazon. You just got to find USB-C to whatever type of port your camera has in order to connect via USB. One other thing I will note is that there's a trial or a free version of this app that you can use as well. I just bought the pro version because I know I'm going to be using this all the time and I just want all of the features. So if it looks a little bit different, it may be that you need to unlock the pro version 
So just something to note as well as you're looking at the app. But once you do have your camera connected and you've got the app open, you wanna make sure that you start out with your camera off. You don't wanna have it on and then plug it in, just quirky things happen. So make sure that your camera is off and you're inside the app on your iPad. Then just flick that camera on and then wait a couple of seconds and what, you, what it will first reveal is if you have any photos or any videos on the card or on the camera, it will display them as thumbnails. So if you want to, you can tap on those and you can view them. That's not what we're covering in this video. And it does have a ton of other features, but again, we're, doing, we're just gonna focus on using this as a monitor. But once it goes through, you should see at the top left hand corner, you should eventually see the name of your camera pop up and then like a hamburger menu uh, button that you can tap as well. So once you see that, you see your camera name pop up, you know that it has successfully connected to your camera. Then you just tap that hamburger menu button icon and then it's gonna expand off the left-hand side a nice little navigation menu. From there, you should see a button or a navigation item that says live view. So all you're gonna do is just tap on that and then you'll be able to see, like I mentioned earlier, a live view of what you are able to see through your camera. And so, so many different great features built in here as well. The only reason I wanted this was just so I could have a bigger monitor, but because it has touch screen functionality built in as well, you can tap the record button, you can change the ISO, you can change the white balance, you can add different grids on there as well. You can, so many different features all packed into this so that you can essentially use your iPad as a giant version of what's already on the camera. Obviously there are some limitations. I can't speak to how this will work for Sony or Nikon type cameras or even other types of Canon cameras. What I can tell you is that this has actually become essential for something that I use whenever I'm shooting on my Canon R5. So like I said, there's a lot of other features that are built into this app. Not going to cover them in this particular video. I wanted to keep this one relatively short and just share that with you because after a ton of searching high and low for an app that will just allow me to use that iPad screen as a monitor for my Canon DSLR, I finally found it. So if you've been searching for that same thing, I wanted to share that with you as well. And if you had any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments or just let me know what your experiences have been trying to use an iPad or any other type of device as a monitor for your DSLR camera. And I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you found this video useful, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.